Um, obviously, I thought that uh, you know Kentucky played an outstanding game, and we did not. Uh, I think they were mostly responsible for us not playing very well, and I think we were partially responsible for us not playing very well. But the amount of pressure that they put on you uh, all over the floor during the course of 40 minutes you know, is something that we obviously can't uh, replicate as we prepare. Um, and when they're shooting the ball as well as they're shooting the ball with the combination of Oscar in the middle, you know, it just puts too much pressure on your defense and your offense, to be honest, uh, to be able to find any kind of success. And so, you know, an outstanding performance by them. Rebounding at 20 rebounds. What makes him so effective? What kind of impact do you think he has? Well, he goes every time, right? So he, he so that that's the, that's the one thing. You know, the best rebounders go all the time, um, and, and he goes every time. He usually doesn't leave the paint for the entire possession, so he's already there, uh, which makes it hard when you can't move him anywhere, and he's allowed to just stand in front of the rim. Um, you know, there was possessions tonight where he literally did not leave the paint for the entire possession, and, and again, nothing to do with you know, the outcome of the game, but it makes it really hard to wedge him out or try to box him out when he already has that position and doesn't leave it. Um, but he, he's relentless in his pursuit. He has great instincts when the ball comes off the rim, and really anything that touches his hands becomes his. Um, and it's incredible to see him work, you know, with that kind of consistency on every shot. And, uh, you know, very few guys are willing to do that, and obviously he is. Coach, tough game for you guys tonight, but are there any positives that you can take away from this one moving forward? You know, uh, we'll probably have to go back and review the film and, and, and bandage ourselves up before we can figure out what the positives are. But, you know, I, I, I thought there were some signs of life from Matt Mayers. I thought Mattia uh, gave, us, gave us some decent minutes because uh, we got to continue to kind of build our, our depth and our rotation and trying to figure out, you know, what combinations of guys can go out on the floor and contribute in a positive way. You know, it was nice to see Justin make a couple threes there uh, to start the second half, which is something that we wanted to do in the beginning of the game uh, and, and weren't able to do because he got into foul trouble. So, you know, there's some things that we like, but, you know, overall, um, most of it was, was not in the, in the positive, you know, mind frame. Damian Collins barely played for them against Duke. I'm, I'm wondering what you expected from him going into the night and what kind of difference can he make? I mean, his activity and his athleticism is ridiculous. And, um, you know, I'm sure in their practice setting, just like in ours, you know, different guys are trying to figure out how this works. I mean, they have a ton of new guys. We have a ton of new guys. And, you know, who's kind of separating themselves or maybe who feels good on a certain day, you know, gets an opportunity to go out there and then make the most of it. Um, but his ability to protect the rim, obviously his ability to finish is, you know, uh, pretty ridiculous, you know. Uh, and he had, you know, four blocks, 14 points. and you know, six rebounds in, in, in 20 minutes. I mean, uh, with the efficiency he played with, you know, he just changes the game as another guy who's attacking the rim. And again, when you have him attacking the rim in lob situations, and then you can throw it across the court to Mintz or to Grady, and those guys are making threes eight out of 10 or eight out of 11, there's not a whole lot your defense can do. About Oscar, he said early that preseason that he wanted to average 20 rebounds a game. How realistic does that seem to you? Well, so far, he seems to be doing doing a pretty good job of that, right? Um, 20 is a lot. Um, he did say, I think he wanted to average double-digit offensive rebounds as well. And so far, I think he's got 12 and 10. So he, he's a man of his word. Uh, obviously, it's a long season. 20, I don't, I'm not sure you can get to 20. But if he was around 15, that wouldn't surprise me in any any way, shape, or form. You mentioned um, the early foul trouble. Um, how much did that take you out of the uh, out of um, your game plan to get off to um, such a tough start in those first four minutes? Well, one of the things that we wanted to try and do was was attack Oscar in some ball screen situations because we thought we could get some ability to to, to, to move him around and challenge him, whether it was on the perimeter with Justin Winston or Khalil Spear, or you know maybe he starts to cheat to those guys and we get some opportunities to get downhill and he's away from the rim. And so with you know, Justin having to go out, you know, Matt Mayers isn't necessarily in that mold of a forward. So that allowed him to match up with, with Oscar and then Oscar to have you know, more of an impact on the game. So you know, it, that, that part of it was certainly frustrating. And we obviously needed all of our players to be fully available at all times. And everything needed to go entirely perfect for us to be able you know, to give ourselves a chance. And as soon as one of your you know, better players 
you know, goes down with two fouls early, then, you know, it just becomes that much more difficult to really compete. Any other questions? Follow up, um, your team did um, show um, some signs of um, life after um, that um, early stretch, but as you said, um, Oscar's presence inside kind of um, took you out of um, uh, taking it at him and um, trying to get those baskets. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, we cut it, I think it was 16-10 at one point, and I think we had a couple of good looks from three, maybe on the possession right after that. And again, you need everything to fall into place uh, perfectly. You know, those all, all those shots have to go in. You've got to get all the bounces to go your way um, because once it became a fast-paced, high-possession game, it's so to Kentucky's advantage, it's not even funny. Uh, speaking of pace, uh I guess in terms of what Savir Wheeler brought to that offense and how hard was it to try to slow him down? I mean, what was the challenge there? Yeah, it was, uh, we weren't able to do it. So obviously it was extremely hard, you know, and, and, and he's just makes misses, you know, he's running it down your throat. Um, you know, the way that he pushes the ball down the floor, I think just encourages all those other guys to run so hard because he's so unselfish and he's so able to get them shots in, in early in offense. and. I mean, for us, we don't see anybody, obviously, with that kind of speed and that kind of playmaking ability in the open court. Uh, and he has such a good understanding of the pace. You know, so as soon as there isn't anything there, he's able to organize them and get into whatever action they're trying to execute. But if I'm a shooter and I'm playing with him, man, I'm trying to get out. If I'm a forward and I'm trying to run to the rim, I'm trying to get out because I know he's going to find me. And so I think it's just something that becomes contagious with the way that he pushes the ball. And you know, there were times in the game, even after a made basket, where our guys are sprinting back as fast as they can, trying to just keep up. And, and it just adds such an incredible amount of pressure to your transition defense. Uh, and, and they're running to such great space. And then he's able to make a dribble move and get into the teeth of your defense. You know, it, it, there's, there's not many guys that can, can do what he does uh, and just constantly be living in the lane like he does. Thank you.